It's your boy, Great Juice, back at it again with another word from the vine. Good to see you. Listen, we're going to continue diving into our study series, looking at Proverbs chapter four. So if you haven't already, go ahead, grab your notepad, grab your Bible. Let's go ahead and dive into this thing together. We're going to read a few verses at a time, um, get to some explanation and keep it moving. So Proverbs chapter four, verse one starts like this. Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning, so do not forsake my teaching. For I, too, was a son to my father, still tender and cherished by my mother. Then he taught me, and he said to me, Take hold of my words with all your heart. Keep my commands, and you will live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget my words or turn away from them. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom, though it costs all you have. Get understanding. So we're seeing the importance of getting wisdom and getting understanding to end this section of verses. But I want to take you back to the first couple ones, because we see in this picture that Solomon is is really speaking to someone here. Right. And from studies, we learn that Solomon actually has a son, a son who by the name of Rohaboam. All right. And Rohaboam is the recipient of the wisdom that Solomon is sharing to him firsthand. Right. And we see him reflect back on the wisdom that he was shared with with his father in David all right verse 3 for I too was a son to my father it's still tender and cherished to my mother then he taught me and he said to me take hold of my words with all your heart keep my commands and you will live and so we're seeing a relationship that is carried right where David uh, gave wisdom to Solomon and Solomon is now giving wisdom to his son in Rohabon but more importantly right remember because we continuously understand that wisdom is the word of God and actually wisdom is God, right? Wisdom was here before everyone else was here because God is the eternal being creator of the universe, right? So understand that God who is using Solomon to share his wisdom, God's wisdom, understand that God is reaching to you and me as the reader to understand that we ought to cherish and take hold of the wisdom that God is sharing through Solomon. God, who is our father for us believers who are his children, are in position to receive the wisdom that he's sharing. Remember in Proverbs chapter one, we remember, we read the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And so remember the fear isn't necessarily trembling in this text, but it is rather reverencing. And so if we reverence God as our Lord, if we reverence Jesus, not just as savior, but as Lord, then will this wisdom be able to have an impact on our lives and we will be able to walk in this wisdom. Right. So Solomon is sharing with us the importance of taking heed to the commands and the wisdom that is giving that is being given through him from God. Right. And then for context, we're understanding that he's speaking to his son and Roboam. So the main point here is understand that we are to receive and take heed and understand and listen to turn to the wisdom of God. Then he finishes with the understanding of getting wisdom and with all you're getting, get understanding. And so the purpose of that text, verses six and seven or do not forsake wisdom and she will protect you right verse seven the beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom though it costs all you have get understanding so the importance of understanding that is that there's so much to get there's so much to gain but above all you're getting in life make sure that you are grabbing wisdom make sure that you're getting it that's got to be your priority that's got to be the first thing that you purpose to grab and your priority wisdom and we understand that wisdom is only found in who god through what the word of god so with all you're getting, get wisdom and get understanding. Wisdom is the top priority, right? Though it costs all you have, right? If you're willing to do something to such high magnitude for something that is less than wisdom and everything is less than wisdom, then you ought to be willing to do it for wisdom or even more for wisdom, right? In the mindset of righteousness and the mindset of following after God and being obedient, wisdom is the top priority. Gain wisdom and with all you're gaining, gain understanding right gain understanding to the wisdom that's being received all right verse eight cherish her and she will exalt you embrace her and she will honor you she will give you a garland to grace your head and present you with a glorious crown right so chair again this backs up what we were just stating in verse seven cherish and prioritize wisdom all right that's got to be the top priority wisdom who is who god so we are prioritizing god as first in our lives that's how he's lord Verse 10, listen, my son, accept what I say and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. 
right? So accept the wisdom that is being shared for it is going to guide. It is going to guard. It is going to protect. It is going to wisdom is going to keep us on a straight path, not only with God, but to God, because wisdom is God. OK, so when we accept wisdom, wisdom is going to keep us on a straight path, not only with God, but to God. All right. And wisdom, as he says in verse 10, the years of your life will be many. So understand that wisdom adds value to our lives in every sense of the term. And it adds value every way. Right. We're guarded. We're protected. Right. When we cherish and prioritize, wisdom will return with love. God love like like we're understanding that, yes, God loves us either way. But this wisdom is going to be able to lead us and guide us in ways that lacking wisdom could never do. Guide us in our everyday living decisions we make all of that. And that is so important. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered. Right. Your steps will not be faultied. Your steps will not be played with. We are walking right with wisdom and purpose in the direction of God. Right. Hold on to instruction. Do not let it go. Guard it well, for it is your life. Guard this instruction. Hold this wisdom near and dear to you, for it is going to guide you in life. OK, do not set foot on the path of the wicked or walk in the way of evildoers. Avoid it. Do not travel on it. Turn from it and go on your way, for they cannot rest until they do evil. They are robbed of sleep till they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter till the full light of day but the day but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness they do not know what makes them stumble and so this is interesting because we see solomon make paint a picture of imagery between light and darkness right light being wisdom and darkness being wickedness and so understand uh, that the following the path of evildoers is going in the path of wickedness and this is interesting because we always label evil as right causing harm to somebody um, or, or someone we love, right? Doing the most diabolical things, right? When interesting enough, evil is also tied to things that we may enjoy. Why? How can that be, right? Because the source of evil or the source of wickedness is evil. And wickedness is going against, is the opposite of righteous and is the opposite of God. So going in the form of wickedness is simply moving in a dis disobedience, living a life to purpose, dis to purpose to disobey and living in disobedience to God. So we're not following after the ways of God. We're not following after the heart of God. We're not receiving God. But wickedness is rather rejecting God and going our own way. Right. Or otherwise known as foolishness. Right. So when we're talking about wickedness and wickedness being darkness, right, dark and darkness, imagine a dark room. You can't see anything. Right. You're bumping into things. You, you, you have no clear vision, no clear, no clear way. You, you can't see your path. You can't see where you're walking. You can't see what you're bumping into because you're in complete darkness. Whereas light. Right. When you have the light, the light rushes out the room of darkness. There's actually not an ounce of darkness in the room. So you're able to see where you're going. You're able to see what you need, what you don't need. But here's the key point in all this. With light, you're able to see right from wrong. Whereas in complete darkness, you ca are cannot see right from wrong. In fact, he shares with us here in verse 19. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. Well, when you're in a room of darkness, you might run into things and you could guess your way into running things. But you don't know what's tripping you up. You can't see what's tripping you up versus in the light. If you were to trip over something, you could point out exactly what it was and make sure, hopefully, that you wouldn't trip over it again. Right. The same way when it comes to wisdom, wisdom, that is the light is leading us in understanding the difference between right and wrong. So we see clear as day what is right and we see clear as day what is wrong versus being in darkness, pursuing after wickedness, pursuing after a life that is disobedient to God. Even though we may stumble, we can't even tell you what we stumbled over. In darkness, you can't see what's you, what you stumbled over. And you'll mistake what you stumbled over as something that is good for you, right? In fact, it's kind of how we get in that direction of your truth versus my truth, right? And the people who kind of live towards this my truth thing where truth is subjective, that's kind of how we get to this point because you can't see. You can't see right from wrong, right? Versus living in, living in truth, living in wisdom, pursuing wisdom. That is the light, right? The way of the righteous. We're able to determine what's right and wrong and follow the right path. All right. So with with wisdom, you're able to see lack of wisdom. You're not able to see right from wrong. All right. Verse 20. My son, pay attention to what I say. 
turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them in health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So verses 20 through 22. Again, we see Solomon reiterating his speaking to his son, but more importantly, God, who is re reiterating through Solomon speaking to us. Pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Right. It's interesting because there's a scripture in Hebrews that shares with us. He says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So essentially what we're giving our ear to is going to build up our faith. This is why wisdom is continuously telling us to come to her, come to wisdom, give our ear to wisdom so that we may be built up in wisdom and be able to move forward in wisdom. All right. Turn your ear to my words. We ought to keep them near and dear to our heart. Right. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Right. Be be attentive. Be understanding. Be willing to continue to be poured in by wisdom, coming to wisdom, resting in wisdom and understanding wisdom, because it is the way of our life. Right. For they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. So not only are they life to us physically and spiritually, Right. But it's health to one's whole body literally strengthens us. Right. It, it gives us increase. Wisdom gives us increase of understanding, strengthens us. Right. The word of God is the source that we can come to that even in our moments of weakness and our moments of discouragement, the word of God has the power to encourage, to uplift, to heal. Right. To give us greater and grander understanding than what we could ever have on our own. Because, again, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways, God's thoughts, God, period, is greater than us. Above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. So we need to use this wisdom to guard our heart. Right. Because we do a lot of things out of our heart. Ah, I just I just wanted to follow my heart and I wanted to follow my heart and I wanted to do all this. No, 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 no. We've got to learn to follow wisdom. Right. Because wisdom is what's going to guard our heart. So the wrong things can't come into our heart, but so that also we aren't moving from feelings or we aren't moving from the predicate of feelings, but we are rather resting in wisdom that is guiding us, right? Guiding us in the direction of God, pleasing to him, following his ways. Verse 24, keep your mouth free from of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. OK, so we're talking about uh, keeping our mouths from uh, from speaking evil right from uh, tearing down others right from false doctrines from speaking false things right keep your mouth free of perversity keep corrupt talk far from your lips don't even don't even move in that direction you build up you can build up with your tongue but just as much as you can build up you can tear down so be careful with what you say and watch your mouth that's essentially essentially what solomon is sharing with us Verse 25, keep, let your eyes look straight ahead, fix your gaze directly before you. So we're keeping our eyes fixed and focused on Jesus. Give careful thought to the paths of, for your feet. So be considerate, right? Be, be careful, right? Um, uh, be, be considerate and careful uh, with your thought on where you're going, on where you're walking, the paths of your feet. Right. Does this make sense? Is this where God wants me to go? Right. Questioning ourselves. Hey, is this uh, you know, let me let me let me be sure that God makes wants me to go here. Is it in God's will to want to go here? And this isn't something where we're always asking God, well, should I go eat? Should I go this, go do this, do that? No, no, no. When we follow after the word of God and we allow the wisdom of God to be poured in our hearts, to be written on our hearts. Right. For us to grow and blossom in the word of God. Right. We're getting to know his character. And by getting to know his character, we're then going to be able to easily be able to walk in. Well, I won't say easily, but we're going to be more understanding of who he is to then understand what we should and shouldn't do. Right. So we're giving careful thought to where we're going, careful consideration to what we're getting into. Again, purposing to come back to wisdom. Right. Purposing to come back to wisdom. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Be careful. Be in consideration. Think before you move. Think before you act. And most of all, use wisdom, which is the, you know, refer back to the word of God. Refer back to wisdom before you go do things, before you go commit to things, before you say things that probably may not be the route we want to take in the end. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Or do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Again, be careful from following after evildoers. 
right? All these distractions, all these uh, nice feel good messages and false doctrines that are surrounded us, right? Keep our face and eyes, keep our cells focused on God and he will, as Proverbs 3 verse 5 through 6 tells us, guide and direct our paths and we won't be distracted and we will follow after him because he is wisdom. So thank you so much for tuning in and I can't wait to see you again shortly. Take these grapes with you. I pray that these were helpful for you. And as always, until next time, peace.